Essie Cup is a commentator and author who thinks that the mainstream media has become a tool of oppression and that its target is the values of most Americans. She bases her opinion on comments like these. Obviously, there are people who are with great intelligence who have religious beliefs. I've always argued this away by saying it's a neurological disorder. Christian America is under attack. The enemy, the mainstream media. From MSNBC's Keith Olbermann referring to pro-lifers as Christian jihadists to CBS journalist Katie Couric calling Christian values repugnant. Its goal, to overthrow God and silence Christian America for good. That according to author and political columnist S.E. Cup, who warns the mainstream media is using its influence to wage war against the nation's Judeo-Christian heritage. Cup, a self-proclaimed atheist, looks beyond her own beliefs in her new book, Losing Our Religion. She contends it's not extremists in the news who are the most hostile threat to our nation's values, it's the news media itself. Cup exposes the media's overt hostility toward traditional values. Her book is a preemptive strike, holding the media accountable for what she calls their, quote, unapologetic bigotry. Well, Essie Cup joins us now from New York City. Welcome to the 700 Club. Hey, thanks for having me. What's an atheist doing defending Christians? I know it sounds anathema, but I don't think you have to be a Christian to want a more responsible, representative, and respectful press. Uh, I think that's in all of our best interests. When, when the mainstream media is attacking the faith of 80% of this country, I think that's a problem for all of us. Why do you think they, they actually can get away with it? It seems like Christians are the only group in America that you can just take pot shots at, and, and there seems to be no repercussions at all. You're absolutely right, and that's because no one is calling, calling anyone to the mat on this. I think for the first time, the liberal media has someone in the White House who is equally as uncomfortable with public worship as the liberal media is. So you have the state and the liberal media sort of working together. Add to that the fact that Hollywood has always been hostile to religion, and that's pop culture, the media, and the, the White House. Those are three very big microphones, and if no one is checking any one of these groups, then it, it's no wonder this is allowed to go on in, in such a sort of overt way. Well, I, uh, the White House, and, and specifically President Obama, he, he's come out with some pretty positive statements about Christianity. And I think one of the amazing stories is here's somebody who converted as an adult, um, you know, raised Muslim and then raised, I guess, marginally agnostic. Um, and then he converts, and, and he's got a lot of public statements about how he believes in the power of prayer, how he sees almost as a universal principle that we should do unto others uh, uh, as we would have them do unto us. I mean, he, he really believes in, in love your neighbor and believes in Christianity, but he seems to be getting a pass on that from the press, and Bush didn't. Whenever Bush would bring up prayer, Right. Um, he, he would get slammed. Why is that? Is, just, is that just partisan politics? Right. It's a, there's a huge double standard. Um, the media uses religion as a weapon, as a tool. They use it to humanize the left and to demonize the right. So Barack Obama's version of Christianity, and I'm, I'm still a little confused on, on what exactly that is, but, but that is completely elevated. Um, it's, it's used to, to make him look like a very sort of reverend, you know, um, spiritual seeker, whereas George Bush's overt Christianity was used by the liberal media to make him look crazy and fanatical. And uh, they did the same thing to Sarah Palin and Mike Huckabee and Mitt Romney. And, you know, the, the Christianity of the right is treated far differently than the Christianity of the left. Do you think there's even differences between the type of Christianity that, let's, let's just take, um, if you're a, a Catholic and you're being nominated for the Supreme Court, um, that's, there's, there's one level of criticism against you. But if you're um, anyway affiliated with Pentecostalism, uh, whether you're mm -hmm. John Ashcroft and you're being appointed as attorney general or you're Sarah Palin and you're running for vice president, you, you seem to be particularly targeted. Why is that? You are, but it's, I mean, it's not just Pentecostalism. It's Mormonism. It's evangelism. I mean, the liberal media 
doesn't really handle nuance well. And if you're a Christian and you've studied religion at all, you know that it's a very intellectually diverse group of people. It's a big group of people. Again, it's 80% of the country. And they don't all believe the same things. So the liberal media always has a difficult time acknowledging that there are differences in, in the faith and in sort of distinguishing among them. So they generally treat all Christian religion as kind of crazy and fanatical. And you're right, they do um, sort of evoke some sympathy for, for other groups versus, versus some, uh, some more sort of evangelical groups, but it's not in a very good nuanced way. I have sort of an internal test when I hear things like this, and I say, let's substitute another minority uh, and, and have the same comment. And let's say, if you were to say this about Jewish people, or you were to say this about black people, or you were to say this about Hispanic people, and you take the same quote, the same anchor would be removed from the air. Uh, what should Christians be doing here? Are, are we actually too nice to this kind of thing? I don't think it's an attitude problem. I, I think Christian America has been complacent on this issue. You know, we've all acknowledged that the media is very liberal. But I think it's also time, time to acknowledge that the media is very secular. And they might work in tandem, but they're two separate things. I think because Christian America is such a big majority, you know, they've been a little complacent. Um, the idea being, you know, their strength in numbers or maybe even what can I do? I'm just one person kind of thing happens. I think the first step is to acknowledge it, to, to see readily that this is happening on a daily basis on CNN and MSNBC and the New York Times and your favorite news magazines. Um, and once it's recognized, I think the next step is to either vote with your feet, your pocketbook, sort of, you know, change the channel, cancel your subscription. And then it would be my hope that Christian America would, would organize around this issue the way we've seen Tea Party Tea Partiers organize around fiscal responsibility. I think Christian America needs to find their voices again and, and remember that they deserve, like we all do, a better, more responsible media. Let's, let's take an example that's just hitting the news now, and that's Comedy Central coming out with a new car cartoon uh, called JC, and it's uh, obviously mocking Jesus Christ. Uh, Christians have complained, but uh, Comedy Central's not doing anything about it. Um, mm -hmm. Same network, they had cartoons uh, about Muhammad, uh, Muslims complained, they pulled them. Uh, why the double mm -hmm. standard? Well, right, it, it's not just because um, of the fear of fatwa, although that exists. I think it's also, like, like we said, there's a huge double standard, both in our popular culture and actually, actually at the political level as well. I mean, when you have Secretary Janet Napolitano, Napolitano of the Homeland Security uh, not saying the word terrorism, which was the reason her office was created. That's also treating Islam with kid gloves and, and, and not giving it the same kind of treatment that you would give to a Christian group, say the Christian militia, the Hooteri group um, out of Michigan. They were treated very, very differently. So I think when you have this both in the popular culture and at the national security level, this is no longer just a semantic battle over the kinds of words we use and what we can do in our popular culture. This is actually a very important and, and potentially dangerous issue that I think could end up costing us lives. Well, S.E. Cop's latest book is called Losing Our Religion. It's available wherever books are sold. Uh, S.E., thank you for joining with us and thank you for sounding the alarm. Thank you. Thanks for having me.